Ah, get into the zone, Hebre. Where the Yidden? You see the WhatsApp? Starting in a minute. All right. I oh, know. Oh, the coffee is good. The Torah, Allah is a lot better. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <coughs> oh, this is good. Good morning, everybody. <coughs> With the help of Hashem, we are learning today's three Prakim Rambam. Hilchois Tfilah, Birchois Kahanim, Prakim Yud Aleph, Yud Beis, Yud Gimel, starting with Pedic 11. We are learning about the building of a shul and how the shul has to be set up. The Kedusha of a Beis HaKnesh is the Kedusha of a Beis HaMedrish. Pedic Achad Osir has 21 halachas. Let's start with Halacha Aleph. Says Rambam. Kol Mokim Shiyesh Bayasodom Yisrael. Wherever 10 Yidin live. We're speaking about a city. They have to prepare for themselves bias, a home, in which people can congregate during the times of prayer. This location that is exclusively designated for davening is called a base haknesses. And says Rambam, that people, uh, so to say, force each other, let's say it nicely, they inspire each other, live in Islam, to buy for themselves, a Beisakneses, velik no Islam, Sefer Torah, to buy for themselves, a Sefer Torah, a Nevi'im, a Sefer of Ksuvim, I want you to know, Chavre, that included in this Chiyuv today, that we have a printing press, the Beisakneses, and a Beisamedrish, we're Mechuyiv, to buy Swadim. Speaking about basic Swadim, now that we have Mishnayis, and we have Gemara, and we have all the Sifri Chasidus, whatever, we have to buy Swadim. Whoever purchases Swadim, Baruch Hashem, the library is growing, we don't have room, but uh, we're going to have room soon. That's part of this obligation. Halacha two. Keshabayin beis haknesses. When the when a location is chosen to build this beis haknesses, ain't boynin oisa. It should only be built elo begava shalir, at the highest point of the city. Now I know there's a practical implication. What are you going to do over here? You're going to go to uh, I don't know in the middle of these neighborhoods that Yidden don't live, but you buy it in the most mechubedik place that you can get it. Shenemar as it says beroish hoy miyos tikrad. She cries at the head of the public places, and not only that, aside of the location itself being very prominent, that the building itself should exceed all of the buildings in that area. I can tell you that in our Aden project, we are building to the max that you can legally build. And that's a hush of it, that's important. So it should be the tall building. As it says, Another din, the ein poischin pischei akneses ela b'mizrach. When you build a shul, unlike renting a place, when you rent a place, you can't decide where the doors are. That you have to make the entrance opposite of the direction to, towards which you're praying. Being that the Rambam is quoting Chazals in Babel, in Babel they daven towards the west because they were davening towards Eretz Yisrael, so they put the doors, the entry in the east. That would mean in America you make the entrance of the shul. Opposite the direction of the Hegel. Shinamar as it says, Vahachoinim lifne Amishkan Kedma. First of all, it, it distracts the people that are there the least. And second of all, if a person uh, comes late because you know they were Isaac Batsar Khitzibur, so they shouldn't have to do the walk of shame, everyone seeing how late they came. Uboinen by Hegel. Now, as we explained yesterday when we learned here in the shul, that in front of the shul, it means in the direction towards which we're davening, which is to, towards the Eretz Yisrael, Yerushalayim, Mokem HaMikdash, Kotshe Kotshe. You build what Rambam calls the Hechel. The Hechel is what we call the Oran HaKodesh. The Hechel is the big structure all the way today in Mizrachman, Shamanichem Hoi Sefer Torah. And, Uboin in Hechel Zeh, where is that place? Beruach Shem Espalolim Kenegdoi Ba'oi Soir. In the front of the shul, in the, in the direction towards which you're davening. Why? Kedei Sheyu Penema Mula Hechel, Kishiyamdu Lutfil. When people stand up, I know that Amam does a lot of sitting. But when people stand up for the Amida prayer, right, one of the five preconditions, Amida, 
He davened towards the Hegel. Halachi Gimel, as we explained yesterday, that a side of the Hegel, which is a large Aron HaKodesh, they used to have a mini Aron HaKodesh that was movable. Whenever there was a fast day, and we learned in the Sechtas Tainas that they would bring the Teva El Rechoi Vo'ir. They don't move the Hegel, but you want to move the Aron HaKodesh. That small Aron HaKodesh that housed one Sefer Torah, that also could have been used as a Bima, they would take it out and put the Sefer Torah on top. That's called... Oh, we're not there yet. I'm, going, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so first we have the Hegel. Prior to what I'm speaking about, the Teva. But prior to getting to the Teva, Rambam says, Allah Gimel, Umamidim Bima Be'emtza Habayis. Mamash, what we call the Bima. We build a platform on which the Torah will be read when, when we read the Torah in public. People would walk the Bima, by the way, it wasn't just a beautiful big table, but the Bima itself was built above you know, the beamers that you walk up to, that will help um, everyone seeing it, everyone hearing it better. Or the bima was also used when people wanted to give Adrasha. Guys, here we have a nice Hechal over here in the Zoom. Oi, oi, mi, kulam. The reason why the beam is built in the center is because when you have a very large soul, it's very nice when you stand in the front, but the people in the back are the farthest from the front. When you put something in the center, so when people would give a, a drasha, the rabbi would speak from the bima. Stomach, you would constantly be uh, rotating to face the people. Now comes uchshamidim ha teva. Guys, the teva is what we explained yesterday in Shul. The teva is what I just spoke about before. That mini aron kodesh, in which you can house one sefer Torah. Which he yesh by sefer Torah, mamidim oisam be'emsa. Guys, it's very important to understand the Rambam. The emsa does not mean that the teva, which, in front of which the chazan davened, is in the middle of the shul on the bima. No, in the middle of the shul was the bima. The emsa means it was placed in between north and south. You got what I'm saying? And as we, we, when we learned the Shabbos and shul together, al pi kabbalah, the shtender, I know that we don't house a Sefer Torah in the standard, but this teva also served as the standard because it had a short, it was not that tall, so you can put something on top of it and read from it. Stand in front of it. The teva, the Rambam, that's not a teva, uh, could be. Uh, it's beautiful, Kevan, but uh, you can't put anything on top of it. They used to read the Sefer Torah on top of the teva, not when they read it in public, when people did Shnai Mikra Ve'echot Targum. So they would go where people want to study the Torah. They didn't have Svarim. So they would go and take out a Sefer Torah. They didn't want to open up the Hechel, so they would open up this teva. The center means between north and south in the middle. That means exactly in the middle. Al pika bala, the standard should be a little bit towards the right. The real, the, the al pika bala, it's like a segel, because the, the hechal would be relative to the standard, a little bit to the left. Then to the right of that is going to be what we call the standard. And then in the middle of the shul, in center, you have the bima. That's mamash a segel. That's al pika bala. The Ramam is writing that this teva, in front of which the baltvila davind, which was in front of the shul, was in the middle, means in middle north south. He was not towards the right. He was in the center of the shul. The back of the teva is right in front of the hechel. See, when people read this, they get confused because he writes in the middle. If you write in the middle, he's writing that the back of the teva is mamish juxtaposed to the hechel. And upanel, klapayam, the front of the teva is like the front of the hechel. It was just like an add-on, a little protrusion coming towards the people from the hechel. A movable little Aron Kodesh that was also used as we would call today a shtender. Halacha Dalet. Kate said, Ha'am Yerushim Rabbi Sakhnesiya. Is Yaakov open up your Sefer? Um, yeah, you have the wrong one. How do the people sit in the Beis HaKnesses? So the Rambam says, Ha'azikainim. One would think you can never put your back to the Hechel. It's not true. It was not considered disrespectful. Well, the elders of the shul, what we call today Mizrach Vant, which was in Babel Mairevant, with the wall in the front, they would take a sit, the elders would face the people, right, by a fabring and by the Rebbe. There's a reason for that. You have the elders facing the people with their backs towards the Hechel. It's okay. And all of the other people, they sit, not, not in the semicircle, the way many Sfardish shuls have it, but they sit the way we have a shul, rows, everyone is facing the Hechel. That means their second row is facing the backs of the people in the front room. People don't face each other. Let me tell you something practically. Here in the shul, the reason why we have skinny tables is a reason, because the thicker tables means people face each other. 
And therefore, the Nesoyen of talking during davening, which no one does here, but the Nesoyen gets much bigger. When you, have, you want to have rows where no one is facing each other, you're facing the back of the guy in front of you. You understand? The only people facing each other is the front row. They are facing the elders, you understand, because the elders are facing the people. And they are also facing Klape Yazikeinim. And you see the word in the Rambam, Muklape Hateva. This is just to say clear that when the Rambam writes the Tevas Be'emsa, he doesn't mean Be'emsa of the Beis Aknesses. He means Be'emsa north-south, not east-west. East-west, it's all the way in the Rambam, or when you live in the other side, of your Averet Yisrael, it's all the way in the west and in this side of the world, when we dive in towards east, which is all towards Eretz Yisrael, it's in the eastern front. Where does he stand? Not like the Sfardim, but like the Ashkenazim. He doesn't stand in the middle. Titus read from the middle. But where does he stand? Like we learned, the Makim Namach. Right, even though it would be ideal to dive in from the Bima, because the Bima then was lifted up, the voice would carry. But on the other hand, we want you to daven b'makim namach. Lifnei ha-teva, and he's facing lifnei ha-koydish. No, it's, again, you would say it's practical. Let him face the people. People can hear him better. No, the, the baltfila is facing Eretz Yisrael. That's what you got to do. You got to daven facing Eretz Yisrael. Halacha 5. says that Amban Batik Nesiyos. And Batik Midrash is that we learned is a place designated for learning and davening. We have to respect the location. How do you respect the location? Beginning with practical things. You have to sweep it. You have to mop it. Right, that's what the shamash is for. It's a big schus to do these things. To always have candles. These are wax candles, right? They are fancy types of chandeliers lit. Um, as we have here in the shul, actually there's an ingin to always have a light up in the shul. It's not only to remember the Ner Tamid, but we learned in, I think, in Brachas, that there are certain shadim that, you know, Kedusha tracks the opposite. And the way you would get rid of the unholy forces is by putting them on a light. So it should, it should, be, it should be lit up. And they should put on the floor um, beautiful carpets for people to sit upon in the countries where people sit on carpets. Or in the Edomite countries, I love it, which is Europe. And as an extension, the Americas, people sit on chairs. No, it's make sure that it's set up. That's giving covet. It should be lit up. It should be clean. It should be set up. Halacha 6. A location like a Chabad house, which does not have a din of a Beis HaMedrash, because it's Lechatchila designated also to do activities of tzedakah and to gather people. So you lot of eat and drink, and there's a whole different dinner. But a location that's designated exclusively only for davening, or exclusively only for davening and learning to the exclusion of all others. Listen to guys, you cannot, you cannot, um, uh, no lightheadedness. What's that lightheadedness? There's no idle conversation, there's no schmoozing, may not be done there. More than that, you can't eat there, you can't drink there. You can't have any personal benefit, or in the Gemara, Neyoisin means you cannot adorn yourself. So if a person wants to, you know, s- straighten up their garments, can't do it on the base like Nasus base Amedrish, and you can't spatzir the in the Thailand by him. When you know you're sitting many hours learning, sometimes it's healthy to get up and to walk. You can't do that on the base like Nasus base Amedrish. You're not allowed to get this today. We built these homes dafke, also designated to do uh, gatherings and to do fabrengens. So we are allowed to do a lot more things because from the outset it was designated as such. Versus a sanctuary, and many shuls today, a nice uh, shul today, the sanctuary part, where you have fixed furniture, because it's taka only for davening and learning, there's many dinim that you have to be careful in. And you can't enter there uh, uh, during the summer because it's hot. You can't do that, that's for personal. Uh, you can enjoy the air conditioning while you're davening and learning. But stop to go into, to cool off, or you can't run in there to, to relieve yourself from the rain during the rain season. That, however, there's an exception. That chachamim v'tal midayim muter le'echol v'lishtois behem midoychak. You know, it's since if they would have to eat outside, these people, when they needed to get a safer, they would run to the bookshelf. I know such people. They didn't waste time. So if you won't allow them to quickly eat whatever they're eating, they would have to walk outside. They would waste those 10 seconds. So midoychak, we said, since you're sitting and learning 24-7, you can eat and drink, but they, that, that was the lunch break. The lunch break, I know exactly what it looks like. It's a two minutes, max. 
You ate your thing and you died and you made the brachas and you went back to your learning. But other than that, that's another way of expressing. In other words, there's positive and negative. Positive is you sweep it, you mop it, you clean it, you light it up, blah, blah, blah. And negative is don't do anything other than davening and learning. It says here that we have to do this, though. Like, you have to, Rambam says that you have to, in the beginning, you start it in every city. No, 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 no. Okay, so Shmuley is pointing out, does every city have to build a base like No. It means that if there is no place where people can gather to daven, then the minimum they have to do is they have to designate a place for a base like Nessus. So but if you have, you have what we call a shtibum, that's the Hasidim always did that. They were very, they lachatchila designated the place for all sorts of gatherings. It's called a multi purpose room, and halachically it has a lower status of Kedusha. Umitzacheni, you can live there. Not everyone would be comfortable to go in an environment where you can't have any sicha batela. I'm not talking about during diving in Pachlau, it becomes very difficult. Comes very heavy, even though again many, many, many most shuls on peak are that way. You have a proper shul, you go to young Israel, it's a beautiful shul, so you have a kiddush room and you have the sanctuary. And you have to be very cautious in the sanctuary. You can't make any cheshboinus there. Only if they are cheshboinus shal mitzvah. When you're raising money that you can do, that's a mitzvah. I'll tell you more than that. You can't use that room to make a eulogy. Only if so many people are coming to the eulogy that this is the largest room and you want to give kavar hames. At kedekach. Ve'ein maspidim lehem. Elo hespet shol rabim. Hespet shol rabim doesn't mean that many people p- passed away. It means a hespet in which the rabim are going to congregate. And the Gemara makes it clear. It doesn't only mean if the chacham is the one that passed away. Also, even if a, uh, whoever passed away, the chacham is giving the eulogy. So therefore, because of the maspeh, the many people are coming. Either the gadol is nifted or the or the gadol is giving the the hespeh, then you can gather in there. If there are two two doors, two doors on opposite sides, right? Don't use this as an example. Here we rented this place. There's no option. But when you have a Beis that has two doors, so people can say, why should I walk around the block? If I have to get to the other side, I'm going to use the shul as a shortcut. Don't make the shul, the Beis don't make the synagogue into a shortcut. Now, says the Rambam, hold on, if you already entered the Ludvar Mitzvah, you can go to the other side, even though you are benefiting. That's here we start with the hetedim. Halachetes mi should tzarech likonis lebeis aknesses likrois latinik echavede. What happens if you have to enter there? You want to call a child out, or you want to call your friend out. So says the Rambam. We just mentioned that you can only enter ledvar mitzvah. Forget about a shortcut. You can only enter ledvar mitzvah. What happens if I have to do something that's not mitzvah, but I have to call out my son, or your son, or my friend? So you kanes, so enter. Even though you really went in there to call out your friend. But once you're entered, either the Yikra Ma'at, read some Chomish, or Yoyma Shmur, repeat a teaching of the Torah Shabal Peh, and then call your friend. You understand? So you went in there for a mitzvah. If a person doesn't know any Pasuk, they don't know any Maimar Chazal, no problem, ask a child from children. And ask the child, Read me your pasuk, which you know Milsal Gav Urcha Kamash and you also have in the Rambam. There was something to that, as we just learned in the Rambam itself, or with the Gemara Dav Chul and Dav Tzadik Dalad Dav Tzadik Hey, that Rabbi Yechonon Badak Biyanuka. That's we had this in the Megillah by Mar Tchei Tzadik, correct? And that was about the Nichush. That's the whole sugya, and that was something that was allowed. Shmuel Badak Besifra Rabbi Yechonon Badak Biyanuka. Ask a child. Or even if you don't find a child, or if the children there, they don't go to Cheder Menachem, they don't know a Pasuk. I guess they, they, go, they don't go to an Orthodox Cheder. So work and they just wait there, linger a little bit. Lingering in a shul in itself was a mitzvah. That's going to be the mitzvah. Shayeshiva Sham, Pashat coming into a base like Nessus and sitting there. How great is that? If a person enters a shul, either to daven or to read, read chumash, right, to learn Torah. So once you already entered, you are allowed to leave the opposite direction for, for you to shorten your path. That's okay. Another thing, you are allowed to enter, you are allowed to enter with your staff. You can't do that. 
doesn't have the same level of Kedush. You are allowed to walk in with your shoes. Now, Chavra, according to many versions, the following words are not in here. But I'm going to read them because they're printed in there. The Ramam is saying <coughs> that you are allowed to walk in by Afun Dasai. Now, there is a machlekes what this word afundase means. According to many of the Shainim in the Gemara, it means your money belt. The Rambam, we just had this word. The Rambam understands the word afundase, your undergarment. And it's a big doichak to say that you can walk into a basic nessus only by wearing your undergarments. That's why many people take it out. Uh, or, you are allowed to walk when your feet are very dirty. Again, it, these words are not in there because you should not, you can walk in with your shoes, but if your shoes are filled with mud, no, then don't walk into a base like this. Don't only walk in with your undergarments. That's the end of the parentheses that many people take out. Now, bite it. If a person needs to spit, then, 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 then they are allowed to spit, even though that's, it's not ideal. We're not speaking about the meaning by us in Lubavitch. The meaning is, is that when we say the word Shemesh Tachem Hevelarik, we don't want to benefit from the saliva that the, these words create. That's a mitzvah. But we're speaking about phlegm. That's disgusting. So if you have to, you can spit out. You don't have to walk outside, but you have to cover it. That doesn't write it here, but we already learned. Talk about dirt floors more than like. No matter what. You no, know, if a person has a body, they have to, they have to spit out. And the alternative will be to leave, which is a waste of time, waste of davening, waste of learning. So they were matter that you should spit out. We learned before, you put it in your hand, you throw it back, and we should cover it. Halacha, you dalas. But the Knesset is about the Midrash Shekharvu. If they are, God forbid, laying in ruins, you should know that they still retain their holiness. As it says, I will destroy your sanctuaries. This is in the Toichach. And look how the Chazal learn it. That teaches us, that implies, even if they are, God forbid, going to be in a state of destruction, still they are holy. They are holy places. And therefore, just like we learned many dinam of Kibud, of giving it covered when they are properly established, when they're functional, Chutz, now let's go, what don't you have to do? You don't have to sweep it or mop it. But it's a churva. Go to Europe, after what the Nazis did, you have all these shuls, the few ones that are still standing, they are churvas. Now what happens, guys, we just learned this. If, what happens if grass begins to grow? You know what happens in a place is neglected for a very long time. So you have to give some kibbut, which is tol shenoisoi, you uproot it, but you don't sweep that out. So you want people to notice that this is such a churva, maybe people will decide to rebuild it. So you give some honor, but you leave the uprooted grass in, in that area. They might be inspired to rebuild it. Halacha 12. What happens if you want to build a new shul? So you want to build your bigger shul. So the rule is that if there is a Wabay Saknesis, first build a new one and then demolish the old one in that order. Because we are always afraid that the, in the interim, after breaking the old, before building the new, something might happen. Then you'll end up with no Bay Saknesis. So Avil Boynim Achar, build the other one and then demolish this. Now, if you want to make it bigger in the same place, so the Gemara gives details. So, you know, it's not the way you envision today, they're going to make a whole new building, they want to make it larger. So build a new outer wall, and then demolish the old wall. And now you already have the new wall. Shema Yerolem Oynes V'la Yivnu. Afilu Kois Lechem Nimenu. First, Boyin HaChadosh B'Tzad HaYoshen. And then, Soi Sed HaYoshen. Bamed Varma Murim, guys that we're not allowed to demolish before building the new one. That's if the current building is not a dangerous place to go into. That the uh, foundations are not, uh, are not, uh, not good. It's a good building. The building is not going to collapse. Or the walls are not leaning over uh, to fall. If there's something structurally unsound, then you have to demolish it right away. Why? Because it's dangerous. I maybe people won't build a new one. So you have to make an extra effort to immediately start building the new one. Yeah, you know when you have to start building the new one? Right away, even at night. Okay. That's the story the game he brings in the bottom over here from Ravashi in in in, in, in Masa Machasya that Itakahalo demolished. And what Ravashi did is, is as they were building the new shul, he moved his bed into the new shul while they're building it. He wanted people to know that until this building is finished, I'm sleeping in here. Huh. 
under the elements, the great Ravashi, and that made people really, they built it 24 7. Halacha Yud Dalit. Maybe we should move into Aiden. Yeah. Mutala says, I would do it. I got to work on my wife over here. She would do it. The problem was with me. Mutala is based on Knesset, based on Medrash. Guys, you can always go up from Kedusha. And the Rambam Paskins, as we just learned, that a base on Medrash has more Kedusha than a base on Knesset. Avaloi, avaloi, beisa medrash cannot be made into a beisa knesses because she kedusha is beisa medrash. She said al kedusha is beisa knesses, and we follow the rule. Mylon ba kodesh veloi moiridin. It's not a double lashon. Mylon ba kodesh is ideal. What happens if you can't be mylon but you can keep it on the same level, which is also okay as long as a moiridin, as we'll see in a moment. The chayin bnei yoyir shemachar beisa knesses. If they sold the synagogue, so they are allowed to buy a teva. The teva is like this mini yaron kodesh. A teva has more kedusha than a beisak nesed because that house is a safer teva. If they sell the teva, you can use with its money the mitbachos or itikla safer teva, the mantlach, which are even closer to the safer teva. If you machrum mitbachos or itik, the mantlach is what Ashkenazim have. You yeah, take the different boxes that the Sfardim have around the safer teva. Then you can buy with its money chumashim. Guys, the chumashim is in the times of Chazal, everything was parchment and ink. But they didn't always have all of the Hamish Yechum together. They had the five books of Moshe separated. Kamagadoyla Maiser Abchia. And when Abchia taught the kids, you know, he hunted, he got the deers, and he, that's what he did. He gave every child one Chumash, one of the five books. It doesn't have the Kedusha of a Sefer Torah, but it has more Kedusha than the Mitpachos of a Sefer Torah. If you sell Chumashim, you can only buy with its money a Sefer Torah. Now here you have an option of going up. So it's not only you can't go down, you have to go up. But, uh, but if you have a Sefer Torah, there's nothing holier than a Sefer Torah. So, uh, by the way, there are exceptions that you can sell a Sefer Torah for. The Rambam is not speaking about it to be Poipid in Shavuyim. But uh, let's speak about when you sell a Sefer Torah, Avla Mokhva Sefer Torah, ain't like it in you can only use with its money. What do you think, Yaakov? What do you do with the money of a Sefer Torah? Money for another Sefer Torah. At least you're not moiridin. You understand? You keep it on the same level. El sefer toira acher she ain sham kedusha lamayla mekedusha sefer toira vechein be moistroy sel moistroy sel means if you sell the sefer toira and you bought another sefer toira now there's a surplus of money. You would think since I already fulfilled my obligation, but melo now at least let me use the surplus money not to buy ice cream, to buy uh, mitpachais. No, it stays with all of that money. Now, that you had a holy article, even the, even the, the building. The building is holy, there's, a, there's, a sen, there's a essential Kedusha. So therefore, if you raise money for something, the Ramam says like this, the money itself is not holy. The money itself is not holy. But since people decided to do something special, it's like a nether, you have to keep your nether. But since the money itself is not holy, so there's a lot more leeway as we learn in Allah Tazvav. If they raised money to build a base of Medrash, to build a base of Knesses, to buy a Teva, to buy the Mantalach, that's the coverings of the Sefer Torah, the Tik or Sefer Torah, and now they want to use the money for something else. So, Kol Ma Shegavu Ein Mishanan Oisen Ella Mikadusha Kala Kadusha Chamorim Mimeno. Same concept, but guys, remember, you know, not to get tripped up. It's the same, but it's not the same. The, the external is the same. You have to, if you want to make a change, fine, but upgrade. Mylon Bakoidish. But it's not because the money has essential Kedusha, but because you made a commitment, follow through with your commitment or do something even holier. Avil, therefore, im asu mashigavu. Lassois, if they fulfilled what they undertook to do. And now you have Vohisiru, now there's extra money, unlike previously. Now you can use it for something else. Building money, in other words, if there was a building or a Sefer Torah or an Aron Kodesh, and you sold that, that all of it has to be used for Mylon Ba Kodesh, at least not Moiridim. Unlike money that was raised. All of the um, components of a Beis HaKnesses is like a Beis HaKnesses. But the Paroiches, that's on the Aron, right in which you put the Svarim, have a Din of Mit Svarim. And therefore, likewise, if you sell that, you know, in other words, the Rambam is saying that by a base aknesis, you can't make a tanai. If you make a tanai, it's not a base aknesis. Like we said, if it's a multi pulpous room. But what happens if when they bought the curtain for the Aron Kodesh, they knew they also need curtains for the Mechitza. And they said, Lechatchila, it's going to be used for different functions. That's okay. If Lechatchila, they said the Paroiches of the Aron is not only for that, then they can, it's also for 
I'm giving an example. As a mechitza, then they are allowed to use it for the mechitza. And we don't say something that has kedusha, you're lowering the standard. It was lechatchila set up for a multi purpose. Halacha tezayim. We're speaking about selling a base knesses, and what do you do with the money? Who says you can sell a base knesses? He says there's another rule. A base knesses can only be sold. Listen to this, guys. This is not about who gave the money. This is about for whom was it built. And there is a halachic difference between a base knesses built in a village, however you define a village, a place in which people from out there generally don't come here. So it was made for the village people versus a, a synagogue, a Beis HaMedrish, that's built in a city like LA, like in a big city. Because when you build something here, you're building it for all of the Jewish people. Because many Yidin from all over the world are constantly coming here. So now that we'll learn about you need to have consent, well, you can get consent from the locals, but if it was built for all the Jewish people, you will never get consent from all the Jewish people. So when are you allowed to sell a Beis HaKnesses as long as you abide by all of the rules above? First you have the new one, then you sell the old one, etc. Bebeis HaKnesu Shal Kfarim Shal Yosu Oisoi Ela Al Das Bnei HaKfar Levadam Shia Lehem Lispal Ol Boi Again, it's not because they gave money. Because it was made for them. So now, once it was made for them, She'im Ratzu Kol Olam Echroi If everyone agrees to sell it, we'll see more details about the Sheva Tuva Yo'ir Bamaimed Anshi Yo'ir I'll explain that in a moment. Then you can sell it. Aval Beis HaKnesu Shal Kerachem A synagogue that's built in a city it was made not only to service the Jewish people locally, but this is a city that services the world. It was made for all of the Jewish people, that they should have a place where they can come. Whoever comes to the city, therefore it belongs to all of the Jewish people, and therefore it may never, never be sold. Now the Ramam himself will bring the exception, if there's like a big tzaddik, a rebbe. We'll see in a moment that if a synagogue was built, the Shul of Ravashi, he said it was built, for, it was built the, he was trusted to use it for whatever he seems fit. Then he would be allowed to do anything he wants with it. Because Lechatchila, it was built al das the Rebbe. But if there isn't such a great person, then it was not built, you know, we're building for the Jewish people. Then you, have, you, can't, you never get the consent of all the Jewish people. Now, more details. Bnei HaKfar, village people should also link a Shalohem. They want to sell theirs. Or they want to use the money, like we said before, Milan Bakoidish to buy a teva or to buy a sefer toyda. So now there's another there a couple of nuances. The old synagogue, when they sell it, they must tell the purchaser, listen, since this place had the Kadush of a Besaknesis, we are selling it, the Kadush is going to go into the money. The money will be used for something holier or at least the same, if there's no holier. But the original place has to still be treated with some respect. You have to say that to the buyer. Don't make the old synagogue not into a bathhouse, not into a bursiki, a place where you tan leather. The Ramam doesn't even have to say a latrine, a vadanat, if you can't make it into a merchatz. And what's a bursiki? Not to make it into a mikvah. You would think a mikvah is a holy place. Yeah, it's a holy place. But people get ungarbed over there. You can't do that in a base haknesis. Veloy base hamaim or a laundry. Now, just to know how it works, the ideal city is that you have elections, this happened from the beginning, and you would elect um, city representatives. Either you, you elected three people or five people, that Imam speaks about seven elected members of the community. They are called the Shiva Tuve Hoyer. When they are there um, executing the sale because they were voted to represent the people, and the Maimed Anshe Yo'ir the Maimed Anshe Yo'ir doesn't mean that everyone has to be there it means they're doing this in public they're, they're notifying people we're making the sale in that public location whoever wants to watch the transaction is invited to come that's called a public sale Bishas Mechira and if the words if you have everyone's consent there everyone is there then they, 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 that the what? No one wants to buy it a guy says listen I want to buy the synagogue but don't start telling me what I could or what I cannot do it I want to do whatever I want with it. So as long as everyone consents to that, then the buyer is not bound by anything. Even the above, mutter. Wow. Because at the end of the day, when you sell the synagogue, the Kedusha goes into the money. And that money, as we learned, will be used for something even holier. Or if it's a safer trader for the equal holiness. So if everyone consents, and again, people will only consent if there's no option. Sometimes you want to sell a place and you tell the buyer you, you can't do this and you can't do that. The guy says, I'm out. 
Halacha Yudches. Another thing, v'chein in Isnu Shibetu V'yair. You have to have both conditions. All of the representatives must be there, and it has to be done in a public place where whoever wants can be there. Anshi al oisam moisar hadamim. That if there's going to be a, a, a leftover money, you understand? Remember with the leftover money? It's we're buying another base Aknesis. It could be that, the, the, you know, we sold the current one for a million, and the new base Aknesis will cost 900,000. So if there's going to be leftover, and they say that they want for that leftover money to be chulen, hadeya chulen. Wow. Even though it began with a Kedusha. Now, says the Rambam, Uchshaloichlem hadamim. Or when they take the money and they buy a teva, or they buy mit pachais v'tik, or chomashom or sefer teira, right? It, therefore, if they made the above conditions, shiva tu ve'yoir, but ma'imid on shiva'ir, then if they followed through and they tack a bought something holy, so indeed hashar yeicholen k'mashisnu ve'yasnu mehem ashiir. So halacha you test the chayin im kiblu aleim kolan shiva'ir or rubam. If when they raise the money. Everyone agreed, or Yaakov, the majority of the people. Guys, put a comma, whoever's using the Chayenu. If not, you'll get tripped. If everyone agreed that it's being done for Adam Echad. What do you mean it's being done for? We're buying a synagogue. We're not buying it for one man. No, we're buying it. On, we're, we're, we're entrusting the money with this one man. And that's normally done when you have a great, when the city merits, you know, to have a Ravashi to be the leader. Then call Masha Asa Asui. That person has the right. You don't need the shiva tuve yoir. You don't need to have maimed anshe yoir. Vohu moicher v'noisin levada kifi mashiyira, and v'yasne kifi mashiyira. And there are many stories in the Gemara about that. That's the that's the that's that's to our advantage because these people will only do it when there's a need. I know by us like the uh, seven seventy. It was mamish the Rebbe. Even the whole Lubavitch, it's for the Rebbe. So so. The Rebbe were to, were to tell you, do this or do that. It's mutter because it was lachatkila given over for that Adam Echad. Halacha chav. Kishem shemutter lohem limkar beis haknesses in a village. Kach noistan oisam ematonin. They can even give it away. You can ask, hold on. The, the beis haknesses has kedusha. You have to exchange it for something. Guys, people don't give a gift unless they benefit. That's the nature. You give a gift, everyone says, I'm giving you a gift. You're giving it because that benefit is in what the Kedusha of the Beis HaKnesses will be transferred for. So sale, it's being transferred to the money. Hanoa that the villagers will receive is also something, even though we don't even know what that is yet, in which the Kedusha is transferred. But you know what you cannot do? You cannot lend it. You can't rent it out. Oh, let me just make a very important thing, guys. You can rent it out for, to be used as a shul, for sure. We're speaking about renting it out for not a shul. You can't do that. You can't even give it to someone like the city needs a loan. The city needs a loan. And they're going to give out a mashkin because then the lender will have rights to use it. And the Kedusha is still there. The Kedusha was not transferred onto anything. When you're knocked down obey Saknesis to build new ones, now you have uh, the material mutter lim card you can sell ula hachliv or to exchange or to give a matana the levenim the eitzim the offer shalem all of the materials that were that you have now, but you cannot lend them out. Listen, she ain hakedusha oila mehen ela bedamim oy bahano shehi kedamim. Big chiddush the hano hano something, but if there's nothing to make the transfer, then there's still full kedusha there, and a kedusha beis haknesses is only for a beis haknesses. It was only designated for the mitzvah. In the moment after sukkahs goes, you can do whatever you want. And you're right, during sukkahs, there's kedusha there. Very good. Halacha chaf aleph, rechoi v'shalir. This is a very relevant halacha. Now that we spoke about all of the holy, all of the kibud and the positive, negative, what happens if people designate a location to daven on a temporary basis? That will be called today in LA, backyard minyanim. It doesn't restrict your usage of the same backyard to do your mundane things. Sarama begins, you know, when there was a fast day, when there was a gatherings of people that did not fit in the shul, they would do it into the big uh, main street, or there would be a, a, a plaza. So, when there's a fast day, but we're late, my mother will explain another time. 
But whenever there's a large, they, why do they gather there? Mepnei kibbutz rav, because many people are gathered. They don't fit in the shul. The ain, but the knesias machil and oisam. Still, ain boy kedusha doesn't imbue that place with holiness. Why? That's the key. Mepnei shu arai, and it's not designated exclusively. So just like we said, our shul here, chabaros, it's lachatchila designated to daven, to learn, to do mitzvahs, to fabreng. There also, it, 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 it was made for a backyard, also, when needed, to daven. But if that's the case, it's a multi-purpose plan. And it, it, does, it doesn't become imbued with the level of Kedusha that would give you restrictions. And then Imam says, it's not only in the city, even homes. Sometimes people say, come daven in my house. Or yards, that people gather to daven. It doesn't have Kedusha. That I'm saying something very important. It's not because it's, it, you only gather there on a temporary basis. Even if your house is always the shul. Every shab is the davening by you. Doesn't matter. This place was not made only for davening. It was made for davening and also to live. Most shuls too. Um, um, that we sp- yeah, we spoke about before already, but I'm saying it's very important. Many people say every, you have the, all these backyard minyanim, it's beautiful, it does not restrict the usage of the yard. All right, let's move it. Today is a very large three. Prakam Pedic, Shneim Asad has, well, not 21, but now to the top of the previous chapter, now we have 24 halachas. Now we're going to introduce Torah reading. And the way there was a maturgam, and guys, this is so good. Now, what we have to do is, is that when we learned yesterday Shabbos, the Seder of Tefillah B'Tzibur, the Ramam ignored reading of the Torah. The Ramam is organized. Tefillah, Torah. We happen to do it in the middle. Well, he'll tell you where you do it. But now we're going through the Seder of reading Torah. For people like us, that, you know, we grow up in a shul, it's so important to learn this. You'll get the system of reading the Torah. There's a Seder this chapter and next chapter. As you'll see in more details in the next chapter, when we say Kaddish, when we don't say Kaddish, after the reading, when you read Maftar again, let, let's start. This is about Torah reading in public and the Hab Torah. The guys, whoever learned the Gemara in, in Megillah, the Gemara says that we have sometimes people that knew how to, uh, the mystics, the ones who knew how to darshan the hidden parts of the Torah, when the Torah says that the people traveled three days, right? So the Doir Shirishima says, traveling three days, they didn't find water means, Torah's water, that three days should not go. We're traveling through life without reading of the Torah. Who are the Doir Shirishima? It never says. In our Gemara, it doesn't say Moshe Rabbeinu. It says the earlier Nevi'im. The Rambam says, Moshe Rabbeinu tikalem li Yisrael. It came from Moshe Rabbeinu. Now, whether Moshe Rabbeinu was the Dorosh Hashemais, he was the master Dorosh Hashemais, or whether the big mystics of his time ran it by him and he made the Takana. However, it worked. Just to remember, Moshe Rabbeinu made the decree that Yidin should read Torah in public when on Shabbos, on Monday, and on Thursday at Shachos. Why? Yaakov, I want you to remember this. Moshe Rabbeinu said either. Three people are going to be called up and each one will read only one Pasik. Or one p- person is called up and that one person reads three Pesukim. That's how it began until Ezra. But the reading of the Torah was instituted by Moshe. But it was in a much abbreviated way. Uh, Ezra came and he was Mesakin. That number one, add, he added Mincha. Why did he add that? Because of Yoshevei Koronis. Yoshevei Koronis is not a derogatory statement. Yoshevei Koronis are people, it means, that have to work during the week. And God gives us a day of Shabbos, of rest. So he very much wanted that when people go home to eat, they should already know that they have to come back to shul. And that's a gewaldike thing, because when you go home and you say that I'm good, then sometimes people overeat or they overdrink. And that's not what Shabbos. You want to be where you want to be on for your family. When a person knows I have to go back to shul, it limits any excess on Shabbos. Return at the end of Shabbos. Another part of Ezra's Takana, the Gamu Tikain, not like we said Moshe Rabbeinu only said to read three psukim. One person three psukim, even three people, each one reading only one. Ezra says, no, no, no. That when you read Basheni Uba Hamishi, three people should be called up. And the Ramam doesn't even have to speak about Mincha without saying, because he enacted Mincha. Means not only did he add Mincha, but he, he broadened Moshe Rabbeinu's Takana. 
Now, what happened on Shabbos, the Ramam doesn't write. How they did it then, we'll, we'll speak out soon. There was a machloik as what they read on Shabbos. On Shabbos morning, by Moshe Rabbeinu, they read a lot more than three psukim. A lot more. But what he added was not only Mincha, but even in Moses' decree of Mondays and Thursdays, three people should be called up and no one should read less, right? The, 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 some total should be Tamsukim. Which Chaps will see 3-3-4, three, three, or 3-4-3, or 4-3-3 three, three, or three, three, minimum. More detail soon. Halacha 2. The Eilin, Ayyam Shkarim and Batayra Batsibur, comes out at the end, Yaakov, you read it on Shabbos. In plural, Shabbos Sois, not Shabbos Sim. Shabbos is, Vemayadim, Yomtiv, Rosh Chadashim, Betainiyos, Bachanika, Ubapurim, Ubasheni, Ubachamishi, Shabachal Shavuah, Vashavuah. That is the reading of the Torah, the times of our, of, of our oppressors. Machlekes and historians, whether this happened Bisman Hayyavanim, whether it happened Bisman of the Romans. The Avudraham, let's follow that Shita, says that it were the Greeks, the Yavanim, that disallowed Torah reading. And we substituted the Torah reading for reading of half Torah. That means it happened during the middle of the era of Second Temple, and even after that decree was abolished through the story of Hanukkah, it, we kept the minig of reading half Torah. So he says half Torah is not always on all these dates. only on Shabbos, on Yom Tovim, and on Tisha B'av. Now you have to understand something that the Ramam himself writes that you read the Torah on you read half Torah on a fast day. So, uh, just Lahoid. Ella. Ella Bishop. It's not true. It's not only on Yemei Tainis. Maybe that's included in Tisha B'Av. Well, But why didn't Taramam write it? Taramam is so precise. But now, Halacha 3. Ein Koyden Batoyde Batsiba Bapachas Masar Anosh Kondavine Choyde. Makes it clear. Just like we learned in Alter Shabbos. Minyan is needed for reading of the Toyde. Guys, people would take out the Toyde, not from the Aron Koydish, not from the Hechel. Let's use Ramam. They would take it out of the Teva. No problem. They would learn Chumash from it. The reading of the Torah means, as we'll see in a moment, that prior and post a bracha is made. And understand something that the bracha, is not for me to be allowed to read. I made it in the morning already. It's the din. The reading has to have bracha. Really, it used to be one in the beginning and one all the way at the end. So that is what we're talking about. That can only be done with a minion. You can never read because of Ezra. You can never read less than them. Sukim. And by David Hashem, Moshe Lamer says to them, that's oil in a minion. At least three people should be called up. Now, a couple of rules. It gets a little bit complex. You cannot begin a, a, a parsha, guys. We're not speaking about what we call in English a parsha. Right? They're gan parsha yois. I, they're what people call parsha. I, there are 54, just to know that Natsavim and Vayelach are really one that could be divided into two. Unlike the other doubles that are, that are separate, that we unite together, there, there are th 53 parshias. But what the Ramam is speaking about parshias, there are 669 parshias. That's either where you have a Samach or a Pei, a Parsha Psucha, a Parsha Sasuma, with all of the questions, why did God make it that way, what does that mean? But that's when God told Moshe Rabbeinu, he stopped for him to review, that became these parshias. So you, you cannot begin a new passage without reading three psukim in it. Now, there are many parshiyos on Rosh Chodesh, Uvayoyim HaShabbos is only two psukim. We'll resolve that. That's the whole parsha. But you're going to have to read prior. You're going to have to read post. But you cannot, when you open up, if there's the option, you have to read at least three psukim. Another din is, is that you cannot conclude a parsha only leaving two psukim. If you're coming towards the end of these 669 parshias, you, when you stop, you have to leave another three psukim. And you cannot read less than three psukim. The moment you do this, you'll see that a lot of technical uh, chachma came into stopping reading it the way we're reading it now. It wasn't so posh. Now we have it, you know, printed. We already know how to do it. Three people that read ten psukim. So since we said it has to be a minimum of 10, how does that work? Two of them, each one will read three, and one of them will read four, right? Yaakov, three, three, and four is 10. Yaakov is a math genius. Now I have a question. Which one should go first? Don't look at your sitter. So you would argue sometimes, sometimes you can say, So put the four at the last. You can, there, there's a logic. There's a logic to say, oh, the first one is given to the coin. The first one is the most chashev. The first one should be four. There's a logic to say, listen to this, you remember this? That since in the Benoidah, what candle was the greatest candle? The center one, because all of the wicks were pointing towards the center. 
So maybe the middle one should be the greatest one. So you know what we do? We say no matter which one you did, Harezim Meshubach. You can't say there, there is an ideal because every uh, Kriya has a Svara to say it should be the greatest one. No matter how you did it, there's no ideal. It's always ideal. How great. Whoever reads, you're going to be shocked now because what we are familiar today with either our minig is that when you make the bracha, you have it closed. The Ashkenazim that leave it open, they're consistent. I think, right, Danny? The Ashkenazim leave it open at the end of the reading? I don't remember. The Rambam holds that, that you... You leave the Sefer Torah open only in the bracha prior, but you close it for the bracha post. And that's Shita Sarama. So whoever gets called up, Poiseach Sefer Torah, he opens, guys, in those days, you got called up, you read. Still in the time, you read it. You got called up, you open the Sefer Torah, you look, you find the place that you will be reading. Now, the Rambam doesn't say you look at the beginning. That's why the Minik Chabad is, is that you look at the beginning and you look until the end. So we kiss it, actually we touch the beginning, we touch the end, we touch the beginning. Many people only kiss the beginning. But look at what you're going to be reading. The Rambam doesn't say you close it. Look, then Vachar Kach Oimer, the reader, the one who got called up used to be the reader, he makes the brachas. And like we mentioned, that's important to understand, this brachas is for the Torah. You understand? It's to frame the Torah words. It's not for you to be allowed to read Torah. You made your brachas in the morning. There's, there's a reason why it's important to have that. And you say, Baruch Hashem HaMavayrach. Everyone answers, Baruch Hashem HaMavayrach. Then you say, Baruch Hashem HaMavayrach. Not the Nusach of the Svardim, right? Baruch Hashem HaMavayrach. Everyone answers, Amen. Then you, who made the brachas, you read, until you finish reading. When you finish reading, what do you do? Says the Rambam. Now you're goyilul the Sefer. You close it. Here, they, that's the Nusach of the Svardim. By the way, nowadays, that you don't, you, the, the, the one who was called up doesn't read, you read. You read along. It's very important. Whoever gets called to the Torah should read along silently with the Baal Torah. Halacha 6. Don't speak over each other. If someone is reading and he makes a mistake, even if it's regarding the pronunciation of one letter. Let me just add a detail halachically. If that uh, pronunciation, that uh, mistake alters the meaning, then 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 you make him repeat it until he reads it big dig dog. I know here in Chabad Solo we're very machmer in this. Here there's little pebbles, just in case the guy doesn't get it good on the third time, he gets it right. Everyone is watching, which is good. Two people may not read at the same time, right? Now what happens if someone is reading? He got anxious, he lost his speech. In the middle, he got farhakt. Now, let me ask you, where does the new guy start reading from? So listen to this. He goes back to the beginning of that Kriya. Why? Because, because the person who made the bracha that's made at the end, the bracha that's made at the end, has to go, like we mentioned, it's the, the brach is prior and post is like the setting for these words of Torah. So if the new person who's reading it, the guy who made the bracha in the beginning, he had in mind the whole thing. So the bracha and the whole thing was made in the beginning. If the one at the end, who's a new reader, he's a new reader, he got, he's getting called up. If he's going to start where they left off from, then his bracha post will only go from where he began reading. We want for it to go on everything. So that's why he has to begin from that Kriya again. Gavaldi. Kalacha 7. Let's go right there. Who designates the Balkaira? The Godel. Guys, every base Knesset has a Godel, whatever that means. Then you have a Chazan, 
which we'll let, call that a canter, and also the, the, the one in charge of cleaning up the place. And then you have the head of the Beis HaKnesses, the Rosh HaKnesses is what we call the Gavai. He's the Rosh So either the Gadol Shabbat Sibar, let's say the Rabbi should designate the Balkaira, even the Chazan HaKnesses or the Gavai should decide who should be. No one should get up and to read until he's being told how to read. Now, by the way, today the Gabi decides who's getting the Aliyahs, but then it was even more, because then when the Gabi would make that decision, you have to make sure that whoever's getting called up knows how to read. He had another thing. So someone who understands, you know, some people, Bidi Evet, some people, it's not, it's not worth it to hold Tzibur. You know, many, many shuls, they don't allow Bar Mitzvah boys to read, because many Bar Mitzvah boys don't read that great. And someone has to make that decision. There's another rule. When God gave the Torah, how did it work? Hashem, even though that we wanted to hear directly from Hashem, but even then, Moshe Rabbeinu was there. So there was Kaviyachal, there was God, and Moshe Rabbeinu giving us the Torah. When the Torah is read in public, it's another mini Maimed Har Sinai. We want to have two people present. The reader is in the place of God, Kaviyachal. And there has to be someone else there. I know that we have, we have many people around the Bima, but there has to be two people there the whole time. And therefore, just for example, if the Gabai, which he calls the Rosh HaKnesses, if he's the reader, so when someone else reads, the Rosh HaKnesses is there. You have two people. If the person who is there himself is the reader, someone else should stand by the bima. There should always be two people there. Yeah, three people. Here, the Ramam speaks about two. No, 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 because there was no Balkaida then. In other words, if the, Gab, the Gabi is making the decisions, the Rosh HaKnesses. So if the Rosh HaKnesses is the one that's called up, the Rosh HaKnesses, so now he might, so don't allow for him to be the only person there. Uh -huh. When you're reading the Torah, if it's the same topic, you can make you can jump over. We guys, we do this nowadays. You know, you know the greatest example every vayichal, uh, every vayichal, because it's the same topic. It's about luchish nears. It's not making a tircha de sibura. You're only going over a column and a half. You can jump. That I'm, the example that Amam is giving is is that on Yom Kippur you read achrei mois, the ach ba'asar, which is in parshas emor. Now what emor? It's more a couple of columns, but that's okay. For who should I it up as long as you don't read it by heart? Now, you know why we don't do this nowadays? Because then they would have someone who would read a Pasik. After every verse, someone by heart would tell you the Targum. So while the person would give the Targum over in public, you can roll it the ten columns, or not even ten columns, the couple of columns without making anyone wait. For who shall I pen? Number one, make sure you don't read anything by heart. You cannot read. So when people like train for the bar mitzvah Yaakov, many people know the parsha by heart. Make sure that you don't read it by heart. And even older people, you have to read every word. You know the word. Read it from the inside. And even though you are allowed to jump, if it's the same Indian, make sure that you manage to come to the new place while the translator is translating. Once the Kriya begins, no one is allowed, none of the congregants are allowed to talk. As it says, for also lots of you can't leave the shul However, between Kriya is Mutar, lots is Ben Ishla is. You are allowed to leave in the middle of every call. If someone is, is actually occupied and learning Torah the whole time, which means such a person is allowed to occupy himself on learning Torah. Even during Kriya, as long, just to add, if you have 10 people without him. From the days of Ezra and Ahagu, they had a minig. This minig only stopped when people stopped understanding Aramaic. Now Aramaic, the translation of Aramaic was given the Ruach HaKodesh. That's why we don't do this anymore in English. But as long as people understood Aramaic, the minig was that there should be a Turgaman, a translator, that was metargim lo'am masha HaKodesh done verse by verse not two verses because he needed to to say exactly the targum he needed to know the targum by heart the targum was was said by memory today we're not allowed to do that because as good as an interpretation you're given it's not precise and that it's also for rabbis to speak between ali and ali it is so People don't know that. So the reader reads one verse. When the, when the translator finished giving over that pasuk, which what we call unkulus, to the public, so then 
They both have to read on the same pitch. Famatargem cannot raise his voice higher than the reader. We're going to have similar things by Birchas Kahana. He's not allowed to lean, not on a beam, nor on the pillar. Ella, he has to stand. The aim will be Yiro. And another key, that's the hardest thing. So Mela Bal Qaeda has to memorize the vowels and the trap. Mela. The Turgamon has to memorize every word of the Targum. He may not read it from the inside. No one should think that Targum was written in a scroll. So let's say the Maturgamon is making a mistake. The, the Bal Qaeda cannot help him. Because people will still think the fact that the Balkhoid is correcting him, that's because in the Sefer Torah there's Targum. Another rule. We're not speaking about Bar Mitzvah. It means a person of lesser stature should be the one translating for the reader who's considered someone of greater stature and not the other way around. Okay. Same thing. Just like the reader, only one translating and doing by heart. Maybe have two people say it together. You know what the advantage is? If someone forgets a word of the Targum, the other one will chop him. Can't have that. Again, aim, right? This is all in the reading of the Torah, unlike the half Torah that we'll see in a moment. There are some verses that are not translated. What's my Uven? Who remembers? That you don't translate that. Even though we know it doesn't mean what it says. You can't skip it. You can't skip it because it's part of the Kriya Satoyim. We're going to see that unlike in Nach, there are certain parts of Nach that we don't read for Haftoyim. Who told you to read that? If it can be misunderstood. Or Ubirchas Kohana. Birchas Kohanim is speaking about the sin of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Yisa Hashem. We just learned this in the Maimon. Yisa Hashem means, may God show you favoritism. And it says in the Torah that lo Yisa Panim. And I know the Chazal answer is that uh, we we'll make a Birchas Hamazan for Kazayis Kebetza. These words don't translate. May God show you favoritism. Umaisa Egel. Any Pasuk that speaks about Aaron sinning, Cannot be mentioned in Targum. From this part, and where it says that pasuk says Shuk is a It says Al Asher Asu Seigel Asher Asu Aaron in that pasuk. Don't be metargimit. Read it, but don't give the translation. Kulon the Kroyim. They are read, but v'loy metargimin. Now, when it comes to choosing which Haftarahs you read, I know now everything was already uh, it's packaged for us. But then people had a liberty to choose what they want to read from the Haftarah. So the Rambam says the story of Amnon, Bamakim Shneman Amnon ben David. So we know that Amnon and Tamar the rape. Don't mention the hour here. Who asked you to read it? Don't read that. As we'll see, we have to go through the whole Torah, and our meaning is to do it in one year. Halacha 13. Hamafter ben Navi. And even though, again, after the Takana that was, let's go with the Greeks, after there was a bit of Hagzeda, the Minig became to read also Navi. You have to first read the Torah. Can't gather people only to read Nach. Afilu or Nevi'im. That's what we're reading by Mafter. Bin Navi. It's not Nach, it's Navi. Nevi'im. Afilu Shleish Psukim. Now, even to read three Psukim, in other words, if you're being called to read Haftoira, you know what you have to do? You have to first read from the Sefer Torah, even if you're only reading three Psukim. I want to give you a heads up. This will make such clarity. When a person is calling to read the Haftoira, according to the Rambam, Unlike what we do nowadays because of the Kaddish, we call up seven people on Shabbos, as the Ramam is going to write. If not for the Kaddish that's being said at the end of the, seven, of the seventh Kriya, then the person who got called up the last, the Mashlem, can read right away the Haftoira. As long as you who are reading the Haftoira read prior to the Haftoira from the Chumash, you're good. We happen to repeat the Mafti, the Baal Haftoida reads again because since the Kaddish was Mafsikit, it's going to look like you're beginning with the Haftoida. And that's the halacha. You can't begin reading the Haftoida. You have to first read Toida. You can even repeat what you read before, which is what we do. And even only three psukim. Another din. Until you rolled up the Sefer Toida. 
Another din. Ideally, you don't read less than 21 psukim from Avtoida. Why is that? Because again, since, as we'll see in a moment, that the Bisman that we were not allowed by the Greeks or the Romans to read from the Sefer Avtoida, we would call up seven people to read from the Avtoida, seven Keruyim, and we learned that the Mitakonas Ezra Ve'elach, at least three verses per person, seven times three is 21. So ideally, you should read 21 psukim. But the Ramam is not, this is not engraved in stone. Like Lamashal, people that do the Targum. You can count the Targum as a verse. And I'll tell you more than that. When people translated the Haftarah, they said the Pasuk. The last Pasuk was said in Hebrew. It was translated. And then it was said again in Lashon HaKadosh. So really, you can get away by only reading 10 Psukim from Scripture. Because 10, Targum is another 10. And then they would repeat always the last one. Oh. If you, you, there's a topic you want to read. And the topic doesn't, doesn't have 21 verses. It's okay. You don't have to add. Furthermore, if you read 10 psukim and you're doing it the way they did it with a, with a, with a matar game, with a translator, then dayoi. I, people ask, 10 and 10 is 20? No, because the last pasuk was repeated in Lashon HaKadosh. You know where you have this today? When we read, for example, Megillah Secha. Even though we don't say it in Targum, but since the minig is, is that everyone says the last pasuk, so then the bal, whoever's reading Echa will again read the last pasuk. Hashivainu Hashem Elecha, then he repeats it. You understand? Here, unlike reading of the Torah, we're a lot more lenient. Echad Kaira, one person has to be the reader, but two people can be metargim. Okay? Another thing, you can skip even me'ingen le'ingen achet. In a Sefer Torah, you may never jump to another topic. You may never do that. But, but by, by a Navi, you could. Um, but you can't skip from one book to the other. Only from the little books of Nevi'im, which are called Shnei Maser, because they're very little. So therefore, it's not a big tircha. And it's really more than that. Since you can read three verses at a time, those Svarim Lach are so little that by the time the Metargim gave over three psukim, you can be up to there. But another din, going backwards, you can never do. Not only from one Sefer to the other in Shnei Maser backwards. Even in one Sefer, even in one little of the twelve Svarim. Backwards, you can't jump. Very good, you're jumping, we're doing that, we're allowed to jump, but we never go backwards, we never go out of order. But it doesn't have to be the same topic. No, it doesn't have to be, it's not the same topic. It's not the same, yeah. Even though you, you, there's more freedom to skip over, but like we mentioned, that the matargim was matargim three psukim out of road, gives you a lot more time to jump around. Another thing, they didn't have books, they had scrolls. Just understand, so they have to roll it. He's allowed to read three verses at a time. And then, If the, these three verses are from three different parshiyos, then you can't read them all together. Like different, you know, different parshiyos. Different inyanim. So different, stop. Stop for translation for every inyan. Halacha 15. Halacha 15. Hamafter benavi. First of all, just like when you read the Torah, the words of the Torah should be set in the Mishbetzois, in the setting of a uh, bracha prior and post. The same is done with the Torah, but it's different brachas and many more. What's the bracha achas? What are the four brachas afterwards? Bracha de Shoina ends with the words Hokel Haneman Bechol Devarav. The second post Haftoira is Bayne Yerushalayim. The third post is Magin David. And the fourth, Chaysim Ba Ingen Kedusha Sayyim. Right? Shabbos, Mekadosh Shabbos, Yom Tov, Mekadosh Shabbos, Azmanim. Kamaisha Chaysim Ba Tvilo. Now, if Rosh Chaydesh falls on Shabbos, now, does Rosh Chodesh demand of Torah reading? No, it does not. So even though you make mention of, you can make mention of in middle, but you don't, you're not choysem with it. That's what we spoke out yesterday when we learned that in the post of prayer, Friday night, the Kaddish HaShabbos, even if it's Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and Yom Tiv, and you make mention HaMelech, but the Chasim is only what was Mechaev that. HaMafter Banavi, you could be Maske Rosh Chodesh Bebrach HaZu, Kamesha Maske Bar Tfilah, that Amam is implying Maskirin, yes, Chasima, no. Halacha Tezayin. Kamei Makhoidin. Here we go. How many people are called to the Torah? So this is how it works. The holier the day, the more you add. But the Rambam is beginning with the, on the holiest. Shabbos, Shachris, seven people. Holiest also in our context because if someone violates Shabbos, the Chayv Skilo. On Yom Kippur, you're not Chayv Skilo, but you're Chayv Kodes. 
Shisha. And Yom Tev, Yechayv Malkus, Hamisha. Ein poichas in mehem. At kan, you can't do less, but you can add. Why, could you, why are you allowed to add? Because since these are days in which people are not allowed to work, no one can have a taina tircha de tzibura. Unlike everything else, even chol ha-moyed, since there are some hetedim to do work, then we're very careful not to make the davening too long. Uberashe chadashim, ubechaylo shol moyed, you read four. B'Shabbos, b'yom ha-kipurim by mincha, and dasheni b'chamisha shakol ha-shana, and on Chanukah and Purim b'shachris, and on days of fast b'shachris u'bemincha, koyrim shloisha. And all of these, not only can you not le- read less than three, that was the Ezra's Takonam, unlike Moshe Rabbeinu that allowed only one person to be called, but you may not add. People should not get nervous that they're, 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 they're kratzing too much in shul. Halacha yud zayin, isha, loitikra batzibur, a woman is not allowed to read in public, mipnei kabar atzibur. A cotton, a likrois, a minor who knows how to read, and even your day, and he understands to whom he's making the brachas. Even though he's not counted for the minion, for the minion you have to have ten adults. But he can be called up to the Torah. Our meaning, just to know right now, is not everywhere in the places where a minor is called up, he's called up from after. That you find in many communities, even though he's a minor. Very good. The chain, mafter oila mahaminyan. We said this before, guys. You have to read seven people on Shabbos. By the Rambam's days, we'll see, they didn't say Kaddish right after the reading. And therefore, if Kaddish is not said, then the one who got called for the seventh can be the one reading the Haftoidah. The Mafter Oila Mahaminyan. You know, it's, the, the point is, is that you read Haftoidah, you have to read Psukum and the Torah prior. Fine, he got called for seventh, Psukum of the Torah. If you don't make the Hefzik of Kaddish, you can read the Haftoidah. No, but, you don't have to do mafter. What you call that mafter, then will be called the mashla. Mashla means it's the seventh. The one that, that makes you fulfill the obligation. Right? There's something called hoisafas that people do. We make mafter as a hoisafa. You're allowed to add. But, if, but you have to do the seven. The mafter can be the mashla. As long as there's no kaddish. The im, hifsek, shlich, tzir, be kaddish. Then you can't do that. Because then the kaddish is like a break. Then if you're going to read the haftar, you're going to be violating the rule the Ramam wrote. That mafter banavi halach yud gimel, you have to first read the psukim and the chumash. Then bein, if you say kaddish bein mashlim or bein hamafter, mashlim is the seventh, or on yom tov it's the sixth. I'm sorry, yom kippur the sixth, on yom tov the fifth, or bein hamafter ain't oilam and amin. See if shalei hoilam yudei likres el echad. If only one person knows how to read, in those days you got called up, you read. Well, only one guy knows how to read. What do you do? You call him up. He makes the bracha prior and post. He goes down from the bima. The bima then was a platform, as we learned in the previous chapter. Then they call him up again. It doesn't even stay there. Up, down, up, down. Today we have a balkaida, so say you have a balkaida. The rule is koin should be called first, if there's a koin. After the koin should be called the levi. After the levi is Israel. That even if the koin is an ama aretz, Unlike in the Gemara, where the Gemara explicitly says that when they had these big, um, uh, uh, who was it, Danny? Rava, Bayek, and English, you have certain people, they were called first. But not now. If you want to know why the Gabai here calls up you before the guy after you, because he considers you to be greater than him. It goes on the order of Gadlus. With one exception, the Mashlim. You know something interesting? Bezman Rambam, the one that got called for the last one, Shvi on Shabbos against Shishi, he was the one that did Hagba and Galila. Hagba and Galila was always done by one person. That's for sure. So Hagoyl Kibos Har Kulam is really in the Rambam. It means that because you, that, even though normally Shlishi should be the greatest, then lesser the V. But Vahachrain, which is also the Goyl Sefer Torah, is Noites Har Kenegad Akoyl. You're not insulting the person who is being mashlim. Guys, this is not mafter. This is shvi. But the Ramam is saying. Okay. But Allah, you test, if you don't have a koyin, then who do you call first? You can call a Yisrael. The Alter Rebbe says that it's, it's, for the, a, it's a skula for a richus yamam for the gabai to call up a levi first. But you, know, you don't have to do that. If there's no koyin, not, not a, it's for the Gabe because he's honoring also the Levi. But you can call a, y- a Yisrael. Once the Yisrael was called first, a Levi cannot go after him. If there's no Levi, but there is a Kayin, you got to call the Kayin. What do you do? The Kayin gets also Levi. What would you think you do if there's two Kayhanim, 
give it to the other coin. You're not allowed to do that. Because people will see one coin being called and then another coin being called, they're going to think that the Gabay chapt. The Rosh HaKnes has realized that the first coin up says Acholo. They're going to they're they're wonder about the lineology, the genealogy. Ain't Shom Levi, Koyin Shukar Edishin is the same Koyin Chayzav and Koyin Huwa Atzmi Pam Shniya B'Makim Levi. Avol Lo Yikra Achor of Koyin Achor. Shem Yoyim Ruh Edishin Pasul. They're going to say the first one is Pasul. Lefika Choy Lo Koyin Achor. V'chein they don't call a Levi after a Levi. So whenever the Gabe gets a school and they call up a Levi, uh, you, uh, the second one is Levi. No, once a Levi goes up once, who's after him a Yisro? Levi. No, that he's not really a Levi. What do you mean? Shem Yoyim Ruh Echad Mishneim Pasul. Halacha Chav. Ketzad say that kriya hatayra imatvila. Where do you insert the kriya hatayra? Kol yom shish by tefila smusav. Achas yom shlech tzibur shvachres. What do you do? You say kaddish that we learned to Shabbos. You say the kaddish. Now prior to the ashrei before musaf, where the Ramam says the hilul David, right? Not the hilul David. Very good. Moitzi say for tayra. The koyda la echad echad min tzibur v'elu koyda matayra uksha goimrim. When you finish, machzir say for tayra lemekayma. You see the Ramam, but the Ramam didn't say Kaddish by the Bima. They would, after they would do a Hag Bengali and put the Sefer, then they would say Kaddish. You know when we do this, guys? You know when we do this? Mincha Shabbos. You know when we do this? We do this on a fast day by Mincha when there's a Haftarah. Why don't we say Kaddish afterwards? I'll tell you why. You, now you got the answer. It's Kavaldik. I was very excited when I have this because you can't add during the workday. Time is three. You can't add. Whoever gets called for the Haftarah, Cannot read the Haftarah without reading Pesukim of the Chumash prior. The Ramam says once Kaddish is read, it's mafzik the reading. So if you would make a Kaddish on a fast day, Mincha, then you're trapped. Because you would make a Kaddish, then the person who got Shlisha cannot read the Haftarah. He would have to read again. You can't you only read three. So therefore you don't make a Kaddish. As long as you don't make a Kaddish, the Mashlim can be the Mafter. No, Kaddish is very good. So then they would put the Sefer Torah in the, in the Hechel or in the Teva. And now Kaddish is said and Yadav and Muslim. Now really you're supposed to say Kaddish post-reading. So you know what you do? We consider the Kaddish being said by the Rambam prior to Musaf or Tere Bayos, Mincha Shabbos afternoon. Even though there's no... The Kaddish of the, of the Baal Tfila is both for after the Sefer Torah reading and pre-Mincha, which is why Minak Chabad is, when do we start the Kaddish? You noticed? Very early. Even, why do we do that? Because we want to minimize the hefzik. You understand? Because if he's going to say the Kaddish right before Mincha, after the Aron is in the, in the Heichal, or in the Teva, then a big time passed. Like this, you chaparain, the Kaddish is for both. The Yomim Shiyesh ba Maftir u Musaf. Now, the Ramam says, but if you have Maftir and Musaf, the meaning is to say Kaddish before the person goes up to Maftir, and that changes everything. Because now, that's why you call it Maftir. Maftir means not Aftoidum. And a, a, a big difference. If you say Kaddish after Maftir, you understand? You can read that. No, no. Even if you say Kaddish after Maftir, means we, you, they, Maftir and Aftir, and then they would say the Kaddish. Okay, Halacha Chafal. And to say that Hayoim, say that Hayoim, again, either say the Kedusha, we spoke this out on Shabbos, Kaddish has said, we call this Chatsi Kaddish, they take out a Sefer Torah, you put it back, and then you say Kaddish in Yadav Mincha, the Chain Betainis, Koyen Be Mincha, Mincha means Ashrei, then you say Kaddish. Um, no, 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 I take it back. The Raman doesn't even mention Ashri, but it's here. You, you read the Sefer Torah, right? You read the Torah during Mincha. You put it back, and then you say Kaddish, and you daven Shmona Esrei. Avel b'yomtev lo'y nahago likres b'mincha. Halacha chav beiz, v'yoyim she'en b'y musaf. Kishigoyim et v'lo shachar. When you finish shachris, you say Kaddish. You take out the Sefer Torah, you read, and you put it back. And then you say Kaddish. Oh, it's Kaddish was said before Musaf. Achak achayim et v'lo David. I'm sorry, this Kaddish is after Kriya Satoira. And you have what's going on over here. Um, beautiful, which is great, because then you don't, you're, not, you're not worried about, again, the issue of repeating. You don't have to repeat them after. And then you say Kaddish. If you have a scroll that has in it only one of the five books, you don't read it because of Kavarat Sibur. You want for the Sibur to buy a Sefer Torah. 
You don't roll the Sefer Torah while you are in public because it's called the Torah Hatzibur. And therefore, if there's, if, 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 you know, you can roll quickly. But two yonim, you can't read out of the Sefer You have to take out two Sefer Torah. Also, one, one person should not read Right, in your nechad b'shtei toiras from two separate separate toiras. You know why? Because shemim yemru seferish and pagama yolafikach kaida b'sheni. You have to call up someone else, or better, you know, on Yom Kippur. What did we learn in Masech this year? Where the Kain Gadol is the only one reading, so that's takaway. The Gemara, the Mishnah says that the second reading you read bal peh, not to be moitzilaz on the first sefer toira. Final Allah of Dalit, guys. We still have one more chapter. At least we started five minutes early, and Svika is going to start putting the pressure in a moment. Kola goyel sefer toira. When you roll the Sefer Torah, which means the white parchment should be external. The letters should be in the inside. Another thing, when you, when you tighten it, where do you put the opening of the gartel? The gartel has an opening, a buckle, a knot. It should be done from the inside. So when you take out the Sefer Torah, you, you, sh- you should open it easily. You shouldn't have to go behind to open it. Another rule. Where, when you roll it up, you make sure that the seam should be in the center. Like Chazal say, it shouldn't rip. It means if there's going to be pressure, at least the seam, it's going to break the seam and not break, not rip the parchment itself. Many places did not have the Hechel in the Shul proper. So whenever you would take it out to another room, Everyone should follow. If they would take out the Torah, no one can leave until the Sefer Torah is taken out. No one can leave until the Sefer Torah is taken out. And not only that, everyone should accompany the Sefer Torah. Today's final Pedic Halacha, Pedic Shleisha Asr. We're going to learn many details about Torah reading. There's 25 Halachas, but we're going we're gonna to move. Halacha Aleph. <laughs> Guys, Freilach, that's the key over here. That Shemashlimim Sefer Torah Bashana Achas. You finish the whole Sefer Torah in one year. When do you begin on Shabbos after Chagasukais, which is what we call Shabbos Bereshis? You read Bereshis. Second Shabbos Elotolois, that's Elotolois Noyach. The Ramam is not giving the names of the Parshis, he's just telling you where you begin inside. Third week, Vayem and Hashem al Avram. The Koyen Vahilchan Allah say that as until you finish in Chagasukais. The Ramam writes Emes, Vyesh Mishamash Lomes Torah throughout three years. Uh, which is very important. When the Rebbe enacted the Takon of Rambam, he made these two ch- uh, tracks, three prakam a day, one year, be'erach, less, and three, one chapter a day for three years. That was the minik. But ve'ein minik, but ve'ein minoik pasho. That's not the accepted minik. The Rebbe wanted for people to learn three chapters a day. For, he mentioned because of this, to finish the whole Torah, just like you finish the whole Torah Shabbat Chsav once a year, that Yidin should finish the whole Torah Shabbat Pem once a year. Halacha base. Ezra, tikan lem Yisrael. She him. How do you divide it? And people can say, what's the problem? If you read one part, what we call one seder a week, no, no, it's not so simple. Because the Rambam is going to paskin, as we know, that whenever Yom Tov falls out on Shabbos, you don't read the reading of the seder. You read about Yom Tov, even Cholamoyed. So you have to adjust. Now there are four parshiyas that have to hit the mark. Once you got that, you got the rest of the year. Which is, Vayikra, which is Michal Kaisai, has to be read before Shavuos. The Toichecha of Kisavoy, which is in the Sefer of Mishnah Torah, has to be read before Rosh Hashanah. The Minigah Pashat Shi Ukoidim. The Midbar Sinai has to be read before Yom Tif. Now guys, this year in Eretz Yisrael, they read Nasai. Doesn't matter. Because Yesh Bechal, Masai Manah, they also read by Midbar. The Eschanon should be read the Shabbos after Tishubov. Atem Netzavim should be read before Rosh Hashanah. And Sav Es Aharoin should be read before Pesach on Rosh Hashanah And just to add, and Mitzoyra should be read before Pesach on Rosh Hashanah Meoberes. That's the Rambam's Halach. And the Fikach, Yesh Abbas, Shekernu Meshach, Reshnei Sudarim. To make that work, sometimes you're going to have to make two portions joined together. Like Ishaq Yisazriya and Zeis Tiras Sometimes you're going to have to put together in Kaisai with Bahar Sinai is going in the opposite order, Shoki. I don't know why. This answers the bomb question. Why didn't we put together double portions, double portions when we get off with Eretz Yisrael? We don't always, on the first opportunity, get aligned. We only align ourselves prior to these four points. To, everyone should know that we're putting these parshas together in order to hit one of these four points. That answers that question. Wherever you finish Shabbos in the morning, that is where you re- read on Mincha, and again on Monday, and again on Thursday, and again on the next week. 
For example, on the first Shabbos, you read the whole Seder Bereshis. Until where? Until the words Elo Tol Desnoyach. Why do you read Shabbos Bereshis Mincha? Elo Tol Desnoyach. Ten Psukim or more. Vechen, you read that again on Monday. You read that again on Thursday. And next Shabbos, you don't say, we already read until Sheni. Let's begin Shani. No, you go from the beginning. It has to be Same content. On a Shchodesh, the first person reads the first three psukim of Parshas Tzav. Now this Tzav is Pinchas. Problem is, based on the rules we learned in the last Vedic, you're going to have to repeat a verse, which is exactly what we do. So the second person, which should be a Levi, he reads again the third Pasuk with two Psukim after. You know why? Because now he's leaving three Psukim in that Parsha. Now he has three Psukim, even though the third person doesn't only finish that Parsha, they also read over Yerma Shabbos, which only has two Psukim, but he read the three. The third person not only reads the three Psukim, but he also reads over he also reads over Yom Shabbos, and the fourth person reads over Rosh Hashanah. Now, Im Chol Rosh Chodesh Lias B'Shabbos, you take out two Sifrei Torah. Why two Sifrei Torah? Because you may not read two in Yonim from one Sifrei Torah, even if it would not be Tircha de Tzibur. And the first one, Tader V'Sheino Tader, always. First one you read the Seder of that week. That's why we call it a Seder. It's part of the Seder. And the second one, Koydabai. What does the Ramam call him? The Ramam calls it the Mashlim, not the Mafter, because according to the Rambam. Again, since they didn't say Kaddish, the Mashlim was the one that read the Haftarah. You didn't have another. And if you make a Maftir, right, if you do Maftir, because you said Kaddish, then you repeat from there, whichever way. And what Haftarah do you read? And what Haftarah do you read? That falls out on Shabbos. That's the Haftarah. That's the Haftarah that falls out on on, on Sunday, Shabbos, Erev Rosh Chodesh, the Haftar will be not the content of the Parsha, but you have to always begin with something good and end with something good, with the only exception of Hazinu. Here you're so far so good. But now, the third Kiria will be Yarkiveu, Vayarashem Vayinots, Harvi Mayarashem Vayinots until Luchachmu. The fifth will be from Luchachmu until At Ki Esel Shemaim Yodi. The sixth will be Michel Shemaim Yodi, At Soif Hashira. Now you're going to have many people that will be called up that Chilosam Visoifam Bidvarim Kashim. Why do we allow that to be an exception? We want to ask people then. To be Achiyach Zeroam Bez Shuvah. It says the Ramah Malach Avab, the final eight Sukkim in the Torah. Vayamas Sham Moshe Eved Hashem. The Gemara says the words that Yachid is Koira Oisai. The Ramah has a unique understanding of these words in the Gemara. Muta Likra is Oisim Abes Aknesses. With Sukkim prior and post. With the Birchas Atreira. Not Sukkim, with the Brachas. Even if you don't have a minion. Afal Pisha Kol Torah Hiro Moshe Mepi Agvoro Amaram. But since Umashma On. Ishaim Achan Misas Moshe. Taka the Gemara says, according to one opinion, that Moshe wrote it with Bidema, however you touch Dema, with tears, or the Balshemtov's touch of Dema, however you can learn that Gemara over there, Menachas. But it's after it's recording his death, so it's different. That's why the Rambam Paskins that you can read those eight psukim with making Birchas Atoyer without a minion. Halacha 7. Kloli Shebetores Kahanim, Bichol Kaisai. You can't stop in the middle of it. And your taka begin with the psukim before and, you, and the psukim afterwards, so you don't begin and end. Neither the beginning nor the end is something harsh. However, the kolis of Mishnah Taira, Kisavai, not only is it very long, but for many reasons it's considered less severe. Bechlal Mishnah Taira is Moshe Rabbeinu Mipi Atzma Yamara, whatever that means. So just for that, if you want, you can stop in the middle, but the Ramam says, Noha Goa Om, Shiloi Lifsek Bahem Ela Echod Koira Oisim. Halacha 8. Mafsikin Lumayadois, Uluyoy Makipurim, that the cycle of Taira is interrupted, the Seder is interrupted for, for, for Yom Tiv, for Yom Kippur. Interesting, uh, not Rosh Hashanah, it's interrupted for Rosh Hashanah also. The Koirin Be Inyan Hamoyet, Veloy Be Seder Shabbos. Moshe Tikkun Lamli Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu made two takanas. Number one, that we should read on Yom Tov Me'ain the Yom Tov. Number two, that's a separate takana that the rabbi is obligated to review the halachis of the Yom Tov. Right? Bim Moyed. V'shalom Doshim Yonah Shol Yom B'Chol Yom Yonah Shol Yom B'Chol Moyed Umayed. Umayin Kaidin. So why do we read on the Yom Tov? Chavra, give me a few minutes over here. Uh, we're going to need another at least five minutes on Pesach. But Parshas Mayadis. 
Betoyras Kohanim. Guys, that's Parshas Emor. The truth is, we don't do that. What do we do on the first day of Yom Tov? We read uh, Parshas Boy. And a Chanami. The Kwanago Amlikas Beyamarishin Mishchuk Chulachem. The Haftoyer of the first day of Pesach, the Pesach Gilgal. Second day of Yom Tov Chutz Laaretz, you read Parshas Emor Shoir Oy Chesev. What, what's the Haftoyer on the second day of Pesach, the Pesach Yoshio? On the third day, which is the first day of Chalamoyed, Kadosh Lika Bukhar. The fourth day, which is the second day, Cholamay, the Mkes of Talmi, Bachamishi Psolo Chab, Shisha Vyasu, Bene Yisrael, Sapesach, Asapasach, Mamiyadi, that's Pesach Sheni, and Ayyom Tov Achren, which is Shivi, Vahib Shalach, until the end of Shira, until the words Kenei Hashem Reifecha, and the Haftoid is Vaidaber David, and outside of the Holy Land where you have Shmini Shal Pesach, you read Kol Abachar, Pashas Re'ei, and your Mafter, Oit Hayoim, Benoi, Vlamoid, right? You know if you are the Albas Hartzina in Mashiach, Halacha Tes, but Tzedes, on Shavuos you read B'Shima Shavuos Parshas Riei. However, again the Minak Pasuk is on the first day of Shavuos you read Aseres Adibres, beginning with Chodesh Hashlishi. The Haftoyra is Merkava. On the second day of Shavuos you read Riei, but Parshas Samayad is called Abchar, and Yom After Bchavakuk. Halacha Yud. On Rosh Hashanah you read B'Chodesh Hashvi Be'Echad L'Chodesh. And by the way, we do that for the second reading. However, the minig became that you read on the first day of Hashem Pocket as Sada, right? And your mafter in Vayi ish echad men adam osayim. And on the second day, oichet from Parshus Lach Lecha, for Ha'elokim, Nisa es Avram, da Keda, and your mafter Abbein Yakeli Ephraim. Halacha 11. But here, my Kippurim is Shachre, is Koyim Achre Mois. Um Aftir and Koyim Aram Venisa. Amin Ha'yu read Ba'aroyos, Shabbat Achre Mois, Kedei Sheyiskar Vi Kolem, Kol Mishinich Shal Ba'achas Mehen, Ve'yachsa Betshuva. And Vashlishi, Kaira Batraira, O Maftir, Biyoina. Straight, you know, you, there's no adding on. The same one that you don't say Kaddish afterwards. Allah Yud Base. Basukesh Bishna Yomim Toivim, Bishna Yomim Toivim. The first, both of first days we read on Pasha Samayadis, which is, by the way, what we do. And that is Shoyder Chesev Oyez, that's Pasha Samayad. I know that this is not about Yomta, but right afterwards, Veda Barashem, Smayad Hashem. O Maftir, Maya Marishan, Hine Yom, Balashem. O Bayom Hashani, you read in the Haftoyer by Yukahalu, El Amel Shlemi. O Bayom Achnoin. You read Kol Abachar, which is Parshas Rei, Um After Vayi Kachal Shloimoi, and now that we have Chutz Laaretz, we have Simchas Torah, Olam Achar Kodem Zayis Abracha, Um After and Vayamet Shloimoi, Vayesh Mish Um After in on the on Simchas Torah, the beginning of Yoshua Vayi Achri Mois Moshe. It fits because you finish reading the passing of Moshe, you continue with Yoshua. He didn't mention Beresh, it's very good. Not only that, I'll tell you more, Shuki. The Rambam speaks about all the days you take out three Sefer Torah. He does not mention it on Simchas Torah. Very good. According to the Rambam, you would not read Beresh. Gavaldik. You read, the, you also read the Karbanis and Pashas Pinchas. Halacha 13, Ketzad. Bechol Yom 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 First, you read Yom Ashlishi. What's Yom Ashlishi? Yom Ashlishi is the first day of But it's by Yom Ashlishi of Yom Tev. Shud Chilas Chol Yom 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 Now, how many people do you call up? Four people. How do you get four people? So what you do is the first person reads over Yom Hasheni. Guys, we do that. It means the the Koyan reads second day Yom Tif. The second person reads over Yom Hashlishi. Well, Danny, who do we call for the fourth person? We read by Yom Aravi. Open up your Siddur. But the Rambam says you repeat by Yom Hashlishi. And the fourth reads by Yom Hasheni or by Yom Hashlishi, which is what we do. The Chemi Yom Aravi, Shusheni Shol Chol Shemoy, Kainu Yom Hashlishi Yom Aravi, Al Derech Zeh B'Chol Yom. Halacha fourteen, B'Chol Yom, V'Yom Yom Am Toivim, Chemi Yom Am Kipurim, Meshivus Yom Am Meshivus Yom Am Pesach. You take out two Sifre Torah on Shachris. You have to take out two Sifre Torah, two in Yonim. The first one you read what we spoke about above. In the second one you read about the Karbanis that are speaking in Chumash Apikudim, which is in the portion of Pinchas, and the Hakoyde Ingen Akarbin, the one who reads the last one, he'll be the one doing. The Mafter, Mafter ben Avi. Halacha tezvav b'chol yom shemitziyim shnei svarim oishloisha. If you take out two or three, sometimes they took out one at a time. Im oitziu ze achar zem one at a time. So only after you put back the first one do you say kaddish, and then you take out the second one. When you put out the final one, you say kaddish again. However, kvaro marnu shaminek aposhet now is to say kaddish after the mashlam reads. Which is why, again, the Ramam ready now, the new minig is you say Kaddish, which is why you have to read it again. After you repeat three psukam in the Torah, Allah has designed Shabbos that falls out on Cholamoyed. You would argue at Shabbos? No, you don't read the Sedra. So you read Ba'oisa Shabbos from Pashas Kisi, so the A, Ato, Emir, Eli. And what is the Haftoyra on Pesach? Because we have a tradition that Chiyas HaMesim is going to happen on the month of Nisan. And in Chalab HaSeichachag, during Sukkot, we read Goi Gomagig, Melchemes Goi Gomagig will happen in Chodesh Tishrei. Halacha Yud Zayin, 
On Hanukkah, the Yom Rishon Kodesh, me Birchas Koyhanim. How do we begin on Hanukkah? We begin by Hibach Abiyom Chalois. The Raman began from Birchas Koyhanim until the end of a uh, of a uh, Nachshem and Aminadav. At Soif Korban Amak Vayim Rish. And everything else is the same. On the second day we read, And that we go until the eighth day. Now on the eighth day, we're not done yet because we have 12. We read a big reading. What do we do, my friends? More than Soif HaSeder. So the Ramah began earlier and he ended earlier. And if you have two Shabbos, it's in Hanukkah because it's eight days. And on Shabbos, it's in Hanukkah because it's eight days. And on Shabbos, it's in Hanukkah because it's eight days. And on Shabbos, it's in Hanukkah because it's eight days. And on Shabbos, it's in Hanukkah because it's eight days. And on Shabbos, it's in Hanukkah because it's eight days. And on Shabbos, it's in Hanukkah because it's eight we always read Shachas and Mincha. The first one reads Vayichal Moshe. How many Psukim do you read? Only four Psukim, which is what we do. Vayinacham Hashem Al Hashem, that's it. And then on the second and the third, you read, you skip a column and a half. It's Moisa in, and you can skip from Solocha until Asher Ani Oisa Imach. On fast days that we make because they have Tzoris, like a Batsoris, like a Dever, COVID, Chayyusa Behem, Chayyin, Barachos, they read. Guys, two more minutes. We have a new thing by Haftarah. It's called the Shiva de Paranusa. Someone's phone is knocking over here. The second Shabbos is Chazen Yishayon. The third Shabbos is Ech Oisel Zayno. And now, Shabbos after Tisha B'Av, everyone says, Nachmu, Nachmu, Ami. However, it's more than that. The Minak Pashrit that want that for the seven Parshiyos called Shiva de Nechemta, and the Chamis Yishayo, from after Tisha B'Av until Rosh Hashanah for seven weeks, Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom, Yom Kippurim, Yom Aftar, on Shuva Yisrael. That's what we call it, Shabbos, Shuva. Halacha 20, Rosh Chodesh Ador, that falls out on Shabbos. Now we're adding the four parshas. That's the last topic of this Spadik. So let's go. Shabbos, Ador, if it, Rosh Chodesh is on Shabbos, Parsha Shkolem. Em Aftirin B'Yoyod HaKoyin. And not only if it's on Shabbos, but any Shabbos which has in the following week, Rosh Chodesh Ador, you read, even if it's on Friday, that's called Shabbos Shkolim. Magdimim v'kerem Shabbos Shalafon of the Parsha Shkolim. Second, you read Zachar u'maftirim b'karati esasher osa amolik. What's called the second Shabbos? Not the one after that. We can, there can be a break between Shkolim and Zachar. Kol shechal purim liyos b'toicha. Even if purim is on Friday, on the third week of the cycle, you read Paraduma u'maftirim v'zerakti aleichem. What's the third? Third one is the one before the fourth. Okay, what's the fourth and when is the fourth? And your mafter barisha mechal achaydish. And what's the fourth? Kol shechal rish achaydish nisan liyas b'toich afilu bed of Shabbos. Allah ha twenty one. Sometimes there can be a break between the second and the third. Sometimes there'll be both of these breaks between the first and the second and the second and the third. There'll never be a break between the third and the fourth according to the Ramah. One person reads in the second Sefer Torah after the Sedra of the week is read in the first. Skip the next words. Um, take that out. We're going to follow that. So, Chol Seder Oisah Shabbos Atatetzavim. Guys, think about it. The Atatetzava ends by Kisiso. So here we have an issue. If you're going to call up again the Rambam before the minute of the Kaddish, before the minute of the Kaddish, then the last one would be would be this new this new reading. It's it, so how do you do that? So it says the Rambam don't have six people read. From the Atta Tetzava until of, the, of Tetzava, and then have the seventh one read Kisiso. Because then they're not going to realize that they're doing something special. The first, the first, the first six people should go already until the Asisar Kir Nachoshes. And then the seventh should repeat Gavaldik. So everyone, it's going to be discernible. Let's go right there. Imo, you say that it's Shabbos Kisiso Atzma. If it's Kisiso, so what are you going to do? You're going to read until Vayakel. You can't read in the same set of the same Sefer Torah because now it's called Tuin Yonim. Now it's Dilug and you're going backwards. You can't go backwards, so you have to have um, another Sefer Torah. Allah 23, Rosh Chodesh Adar that falls out on Shabbos. The Rambam is writing the only times. The Rambam, you take out three Sefer Torah. The Rambam does not mention Simchas Torah. What are the max three times? One of the three times, Rosh Chodesh Adar that falls out on Shabbos. What are the three Sefer Torah? Seder of the Yom. 
Tadar Vishayna, Tadar Rishchaydish, and the third one, Kisisa. The other possibility, Rishchaydish, Nisan, that falls on on Shabbos, three Sifrei Torah. First one, the Seder of the week. Second one is Rishchaydish. The third one is Vachodesh Ozeh, that's Pashos Achodesh, the fourth of the four Pashos. Now, when do you have the other possibility? Chanukah, Chanukah, Rishchaydish, Shabbos. Rishchaydish, Tevish, Chalias, Bishabbos. Again, you take out three Sifrei Torah. Seder Ayoyim, Rishchaydish, and Chanukah. If Rishchaydish, Tevish, falls out on a weekday, so then you take out during the weekday two Sifrei Torah. Three reading of Shchodesh and the fourth reading is Hanukkah. The final halacha, Chavra, get ready for Tzvika. Chav hey, af al pi she adam shemeya kol atayru kol b'chol Shabbos b'tzibur. Even though you're listening, you're coming to Shul on Shabbos. Chayiv, everyone is obligated to read the Torah for themselves every single week. What what part the seder of that week? How shnayim mikra ve'echot targum and a pasuk that doesn't have targum read it three times in the Chumash at sheyashlim parshi Yosef im atzibur. Chavra to be continued. No. We started five minutes early now. Go, it's Vika, Nudavar Alamanyani. We have Tominyoni, right? Yeah, we have enough people. I got to go. Okay, 10. We are starting the Shtibu right now. Guys, another minion in the Shtibu. Thank you, Tag. Let it go home. I didn't have my.